Good morning, students. We are ready to start on Lesson 109. Uh, I would like to give you a quick note here. Hand in tomorrow evening, which is Tuesday evening, all of your completed lessons through 109. If you have 1010 completed, that's, that would be uh, nice too because I want to score all those and uh, have them ready for your completed test. We will take the test after Easter vacation. Okay, so we start off here with the new, new uh, part and it's uh, problem number seven. If you look seven through 15 there, a number of those have less than 71 written underneath of them. We're not going to do those. All of those are simply, if you factor out uh, a number, it reduces it down to where you'll know how to do those easily. We're just going to do the new ones. And number seven, the first one is number seven. 3x squared, negative 14x, a negative 5. It says to always check to make sure these are in descending order. That's step number one. Um, some of these you can factor numbers out then and those are the ones that you can factor uh, out of they will come back to a simplified form that you'll be able to know know how to do yourself if you look underneath them again you'll see lesson 71 underneath of those there you go this is this is lesson 109 uh, we're going to take 3x and an x here because of this and when we do what we're doing actually is, is just dividing this up to where when we multiply this back we will come up with 3x squared now, the possibilities here are you use all of the possible multiples of negative 5. And in this case, it's a negative 5 and a positive 1 and a positive 5 and a negative 1. Those are the only two that I know of. One of these will work to make, to make this work. And I'm just going to uh, tell, you, tell you which one it is so that we can move on fairly fast. In this case, it's going to be a neg negative 5 and a positive 1, and I'll show you why. To check, to check this out, we take these, these outside numbers and we multiply them together. 3 times negative 5 is a negative 15. And then we use the, this center number, add that to, to this. Negative 15 and positive 1 equals a negative 14. If we have the right ones, this will always equal the center number. That was a negative 14. So we chose the right ones right here, but this is a decision that you'll have to make. We could have, we could have possibly done positive, positive five and a negative one, it would not have worked. You understand that? And then I wanna show you one other thing here. If, uh, what are we doing here? If we multiply whatever we have in these two uh, sets of parentheses, they, will sh they should come back up to the original answer. Let's do it here. I'm only gonna do this one, three X positive one and an X negative five. 3x times x is a 3x squared. 3x uh, times that, 1 is a positive x. Negative 5 times 3x is a negative 15x. Negative 5 times positive 1 is a negative 5. Add these together. 3x squared, negative 14x, negative 5. Is this the same as the original? It surely is, so we got we did make the right choices. Now, some of these will get much more complicated than that. Uh, number that was number seven. Go to number nine again. First, start off write it in descending order: two x squared, neg negative fifteen x, and a positive eighteen. Can we factor out? We cannot factor anything out, so we will make us some choices here. In this case, I'm just going to do this on this one to show you all the different possibilities. Positive 18 can, either, can be a positive 6 and a positive 3, a negative 6 and a negative 3, a positive 9 and a positive 2, a negative 9 and a negative 2, positive 18 and a positive 1, a negative 18 and a negative 1. I believe that probably all of those. Which ones do we choose? Well, first off, let's do this 2x and x so that this come, this equals back to that. Which two or which set of numbers do we use on number nine? I'm going to suggest negative six and a negative three. Let's see if this works. Negative six and a negative three. We'll check ourselves Again, we multiply the outside numbers, this times this, 
2 times negative 6 is a negative 12. And we add this number to it, a negative 3. That's a negative 15. Does that equal the center number? It does. So that was the right choice. But these, these are all the possibilities that we would have to, to uh, make a judgment on. Only one of these would work. That was number 9. Number 10, write it in descending order, 2x squared, positive 7x, and a negative 15. Can we, can we factor out? We cannot. 2x and x, always to multiplied back together, will we'll, we'll equal the original number there. Now, what's the possibilities on number 10? There are several. Um, we have a positive, shall I, I'll write them down. It's, it's going to be a, a positive 5, negative 3, negative 5, positive 3, Positive 15, negative 1, negative 15, negative 1. Lots of possibilities. Uh, which one do you think? I'm just going to give you the answer again. I want you to be able to think through these in future lessons, but I'll quickly do these. So now we have, a again, same process. We multiply the outside numbers. 2 times positive 5 is a positive 10, and add the center number, negative 3, that is a positive 7. Does this equal the center? It does. So this is your right answer out of all these possibilities. 10. Number 14. One more of these kind. 2x squared. Positive 9x, always be sure you have them in descending order. Cannot factor out, so we will do the 2x and an x. That one is that big long list again. So which one should we choose? These are not, not solved very quickly sometimes because we can have to do some experimenting. But if you can just kind of do it in your head, if I would use a positive 6 and a negative 3, that does equal negative 18. Let me just try it. Multiply the outside numbers together. 2 times positive 6 is a positive 12. Add the center number, negative 3. It's a positive 9. Bingo! This is a positive 9 and a positive 9. That's the way we check ourselves out. That was 14, number 16. Again, the other ones that were in this uh, category here from 7 to 15, they are all, I'll just do one quickly here for you. Number 8, 2x squared, positive 10x, positive 8. Okay, well, what, it, what it is, these are even numbers, so we're going to factor the 2 out, and you'll see that this is going to be back to where you would probably know how to do it positive 5x, positive 4. I factored a 2 out of it. 2, that reduces to 5, that reduces to 4. Now we have the 2x, x. What's your choice? Positive 4 and a positive 1. Does that equal, to add them together, positive 5? There's your answer. Number 16. This is from your previous lesson. Still learning a bit here. X positive 3 equals X negative 3. The first uh, thing that we do to solve this is to, is to come up to, is to remove the square root sign. And how do we do that? If you pull your memory up, what we, what we discuss is you square this, and what you do on one side, you must do on the other side of the equation, and it's squaring it. <coughs> the square... Uh, the square of this is always this complete number uh, inside the square root sign, x positive 3. Remember how we, how we discussed that uh, on a previous lesson. But then this, is, this will take a little time. x negative 3 times x negative 3 is a 2, sorry, x squared, 
x squared, negative 3x, negative 3x, and a positive 9. Add this together, x squared, negative 6x, positive 9. Um, for the room that I need here, I'm just going to erase this. This is our answer here, so I'm going to erase everything above it and move this up. x squared, negative 6x, positive 9. All right, we're going to need to get everything on the left side. This, this is a positive x squared now. It's going to become a negative x squared. Combine the x's together. Bring it on this side. It's a positive 6x. And an x, that is positive 7x. Then we have the positive 9. Bring it on this side. It's a negative 9 and a positive 3. That's a negative 6. So we got all that together. This all equals 0. I'm going to erase out for room's sake. Um, then we're going to factor out the negative because we don't want to start off with the negative. So we've got x squared uh, factored out the negative. So that's going to change this sign, negative 7x. Again, it changes this sign, positive 6 equals 0. So we got to that point. I'm going to continue to erase so we have room here. That the the uh, possibilities here. What is going to make that a negative seven? A negative six and a negative one equals negative seven. Is that correct? Okay. And then x would be the opposite of, the, of this. So it's positive six and a positive one. Now at this stage, we would need to check to see if these work in the original terms here. Here is what we started off with. x positive 3 equals x negative 3. Here's your x's. And these, these, this is what we solved for these x's. Okay. Let's try positive 1 first. 1, 1. 1 plus 3 equals 4. The square root of 4 equals 2. 1, negative 3 equals negative 2. Does 2 equal negative 2? Absolutely not. So we need to try the other number. So we, dis we discovered that the 1 does not work. Cross it out. Now we're going to try this. Hopefully the 6 will work. This is going to be 6 and 6 where x is at. 6 positive 3 is 9, square root of 9 is 3. 6 minus 3 is 3. Does 3 equal 3? It does. So the positive 6 is the only number that works. That's your answer, positive 6. Number 17 is a similar problem, maybe even easier. 3x negative 3 equals x positive 7. Both of those have the square root sign above them. We square those to remove it. What we do on one side, we'll do on the other. Again, the total number is, is the square of that. 3x negative 3 equals, this side had a square root sign too, so that is the x positive 7. We will combine these. We have a 3x here. And have an x here, putting on this side is going to be a negative x. That's going to be a 2x equals, put the negative 3 on that side, positive 3. That's going to become 10. 2x, we'll, get, uh, we'll divide by the 2. x equals 5. We only have one possibility, and we hope this works. One side must equal the other. We got an x equals 5. Remember that? All right, so here we go. 3 x negative 3 equals x positive 7. We'll substitute 5. 5 and 5. 3 times 5 is 15. Negative 3 is the square root of 12. Makes sense? 5 plus 12 is the square root of 12. Does the, does the square root of 12 equal the square root of 12? We, that is absolutely true. So we, uh, x does equal 5. 
That was 17. Number 18, find the equation of the line through this. That is a parallel. If you remember that on, from lesson 107, uh, the original here, y, y equals negative 2x plus 2. We can, uh, we can get our line on the graph. In fact, we'll just do it. 2 is where we start off at. And it's a negative, it's going downhill, so we go down two over one, down two over one, down two over one, down two over one. This is going to be somewhere up through here. And what they're asking us to do is to change this to their given ordered pair. They have a four and a negative three. What that's going to do is change this number. This is called the B position. Remember that, that's changing the B position. Not so difficult. This is the neg negative three is in the y graphing. So we put exchange y, we do a negative three. And the uh, four is in the x position right here. We've got a negative two times four. Negative, negative two times four is a negative eight. Put that on the other side, it becomes a positive eight. Positive eight and a negative three is a positive five. All we're gonna do now is change the B, B number position uh, from a positive two to a positive five. Again, um, we would go, this is, this is the B position, go one, two, three, four, five. And our number is still the same here on slope. We go down, down two over one, down two over one, down two over one. We're going to end up having a parallel line. That was number 18. And the final one, number 19. I'm hoping that by now you'll remember this equation to solve number 19. How many of you remember it? Write it down if you, if you remember it. It is the y2 negative y1 over x2 negative x1. Important that you memorize that. The given points that they give us is 2 and a 5 and a negative 4 and a negative 3. Always write these down in the order they give them to us because that's important. Y2. This is your Y2 right here because it's the second. There. Does that, I'm hoping that y'all they'll understand that. This, this is equation one and this is equation two. So this is when we say Y2, that means the one on the right. Here we go. Y2 is a negative three minus Y1, which is a five, negative five. And then the X down here is a negative four and minus two, negative two. Add these together, it's a negative eight over a negative six. Do the math on that, it's a positive slope is a positive four over six. Does that make sense? Y equals positive four over six X. Sorry, that was not right. <laughs> to reduce this down, it's going to be 4 over 3, 4 over 3. Okay, now what we don't have is the B position. Remember, we call this the B position. We have the slope. Let's see where we, how we can get that. What we can do is go back up to the top and choose either this set or this one and substitute. I like to do positive, so I'm going to do the positive set. This is your Y position, is that right? Y, where the Y is at, I will put the five. This is the X position, correct? So I put this where the, this is two, and I'll make a fraction out of it. Okay, so I multiply this. Four times two is eight, three times one is three. Need to add these two together. I move it back over to this side. Do it this way, and as it chain goes past it, the equal sign, it becomes a negative eight over three. Add that to the positive five over one, change it to common denominators. That is going to be a three also, and it changes this to a 15. 
Now I have a negative 8 and a positive 15. That is a positive 7 over 3. My final equation. You haven't lost me this at this point yet. Let me raise this out. We had y equals the slope of 4, 3, x. And in the b position, we solved that a while ago, is a positive 7 over 3. That is one of the more intense uh, solving of, all, of, of a lot of things we've done here. So there you have it. And that was number 19. That concludes it. Y'all have a blessed day. Again, hand those in tomorrow evening, your lessons, so we can score those over the holidays. While y'all take vacation, we'll be scoring your papers. Blessings to you.